Welcome. In this video, we'll demonstrate the integration of Tripwire Log Center with Tripwire Enterprise, along with additional Tripwire Log Center features, such as how to easily build correlation rules. We're going to start in Tripwire Enterprise. We see it has detected 10 changes on a server. Here's a summary of those changes and who made them, which is critical information. Here's how to get a side-by-side -side view of that information. Click on the Elements View button and click on Modification for one of the elements. We'll use login.defs for this demo. This shows the baseline of the file on the left and the change on the right. In addition to what's provided in the summary, this is also critical information. Wouldn't it be useful to have the context or related activities around a change? In many cases, users see this change data in Tripwire Enterprise and then have to pass that information off to another department within the organization that handles log data, and that becomes a disconnect. With the integration of Tripwire Log Center and Tripwire Enterprise, you can click on the server name and open up the log events related to those changes. These log events are being pulled from Tripwire Log Center into Tripwire Enterprise. In this example, you know the user who made the change was D. Henderson, so you do a search on his name and see all the changes he made to the server. Now, let's look at the log.defs file, which you find with a quick search on its name. A lot of detail is presented about the changes D. Henderson made to this element. You'll notice that he changed his privileges and made a number of other changes to the file. All this information is available to you in one interface in seconds. Next, one would typically transition over to Tripwire Log Center. Here's Tripwire Log Center's dashboard. Down in the lower left-hand corner, there's a custom user login panel. That's a text panel that I generated from within Tripwire Log Center that gives the ability to place it onto a dashboard through customization. You'll see on this particular dashboard the top 10 host names. We're collecting events around sensors, top source addresses, top destinations, and even locations of where events are coming into. Dashboards are very easy to customize by simply clicking on the plus sign and then adding various different types of graphs and panels. Next, let's take a look at the Configuration tab. The Configuration tab is where we find the managers and the assets that we're monitoring, which have been broken down into asset groups. Further down, you'll notice various sets of normalization rules and correlation rules that have been installed. Next is a set of lists where you can go to create additional lists, such as terminated employees and contractors. Or go here and make changes to existing correlation rules. Let's take a look at actions. Actions give me the ability to take action on a specific significant event that has occurred. You can add as many actions here as you want. Now, we'll move over to the Audit Logger. In the Audit Logger, you have the ability to search for specific key information. Here, we're doing a search on Login. And when I do this, it's going to list processed events. These are events that have already been normalized. I can also go back to my Query tab and change List Events Processed to List Events Raw and look at the raw events that are related to the word Login. From here, you can also run a quick report of that data. As you can see, the audit logger is a very effective method of getting and sharing information. You'll also notice there's an archive tab, and from there you can archive log data after a set period of time, older than 90 days in this example. Let's now take a look at the task manager. In the task manager, you have the ability to create panels, filters, tasks that you want to run, and then put them into the task scheduler. Here's how you can filter this data. There's a panel open here called a custom user login panel. You'll see the output to this is a text panel. Text panels can then placed onto your dashboard. So now that we've got our filter, we're going to look for any user that doesn't match system, authority, anonymous, star, or hash. So click on the third icon called Create Correlation Rule Decision, just below the Filter Wizard tab. This is how you convert a filter into a correlation rule. 
In this case, we'll call the decision name Top Users. Then click Add and it asks, do you want to create a new correlation rule using the decision? When you click Yes, it opens up a palette to create a new correlation rule. You'll notice it's already called Top Users. The first thing we'll do is add a collector to it. So we grab a collector and drag it to the screen and then select an output. In this example, we're going to select a default database called Events. Let's now add an action. In this example, we're going to send the admin staff an email. And let's also send a syslog upstream. So drag this piece to the palette and then simply connect them. The dot on the top of the decision is the input to the decisions. The dots on the sides are false outputs, while the dot on the bottom represents true output. So, in this example, events coming in from any collector will look for users that we specify in our filter. And if we find a match, we'll write it to the event database, send admin staff an email, and also send a syslog upstream to something, such as other product like Splunk, ArcSight, Logarithm, etc. At this point, we can go to Rule Settings and give this a name and a group that we want to save it in, and save the correlation rule by clicking on the disk icon. Here's the final example in this demo. Let's go back to the Task Manager, and from the Task Manager, we'll look at the Latest Terminated Employee panel. This is a list of terminated contractors or employees that we're going to filter. I can change that by going over to the far right, clicking this drop-down, and selecting a different list. Or I can add additional lists. What we're looking for is events related to users who are in the terminated employees or contractors list. We're going to create a correlation rule from that. So click the icon and enter a decision name and click Add. From here, we'll create a new decision. Now this should look familiar. We'll select a collector, drop it onto the screen, and then select an output, and within my output again, I'll select a default database. We'll also select an action. We want to disable the account, and we also want to send an email to admin. Again, the same thing applies. We go here and just connect the dots, creating a correlation rule. This is a user-friendly drag-and-drop interface that Tripwire Log Center users really appreciate. Thank you for your time, and we hope you found this demo informative and useful. If you'd like to learn more about Tripwire Log Center or other Tripwire solutions and integrations, please contact sales at tripwire.com.